I always thought David O. Russell was an amazing filmmaker, but then I watched all of his movies, and then I found out he has some pretty questionable films. Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking. Here's my ranking of David O. Russell's movies. Yes, David O. Russell is a great writer, great director, and he's been making movies for quite some time since like the late 90s and stuff, and I thought I'd celebrate David O. Russell's filmography by giving my ranking of all of his films from my least favorite to my favorite. Again, this is all opinion, so remember that. So yeah, let's get started. Here's my ranking of David O. Russell's films from my least favorite to my favorite. Alright, coming at number 9 is the movie that is a complete pile of turd, and that is the movie Accidental Love. Yes, this was my top, this was my number two worst movie of 2015 for good reason. This movie is so bad, David Russell is so ashamed of it, he doesn't even want to put his name on it, and like, you know, when it says directed by, written by, and this was all him, this was David Russell, he had help, obviously, but this movie is awful, it is so bad, it is one of the worst comedies of this entire decade, it is right there with Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star, and other shitty Adam Sandler movies like Just Go With It, Grown Ups 2, and Jack and Jill, this movie is absolutely awful, and it has a big cast, it has like Jake Gyllenhaal, Jessica Biel, Tracy Morgan, uh, James Marsden, like, this, this movie has a huge cast and stuff, and all of them are just awful in this movie, and this story, the story is so stupid, it's the dumbest idea, the story of this movie is about this waitress girl, and she's about to marry this guy, but then she gets a nail gun to the head, and then she gets, like, dumber, and then her fiancé leaves her because she's so stupid, and then she falls in love with this guy, Jake Gyllenhaal and stuff, and he loves her for who she is, not how intelligent she is, and... Oh my god, the, that story is fucking stupid. That screams Happy Madison. It isn't Happy Madison, no, no. Even Happy Madison probably wouldn't even take this. And they're the fucking people who did the house, buddy, and just go with it. This movie's awful. And the fact that David O. Russell wrote and directed this movie is just shameful. Shame. 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 Yeah, I hate this movie. Yeah, Accidental Love, one of the worst comedies out there, and hands down the worst David O. Russell film. Coming number eight is Joy. Yes, Joy. Yes, another movie that was a complete turd and also came out in 2015. This movie was not good. This was, uh, stars uh, Jennifer Lawrence. It has Bradley Cooper, Robert De Niro and stuff. Basically, it's about this girl who develops this new mop idea, this new cleaning product, product and stuff. And, yeah, it's not a good movie. It's not very funny. And I hate these characters. A lot of these characters are very unlikable characters, like really despicable characters. Jennifer Lawrence is the only one that's giving a pretty decent performance. Rob De Niro's wasted. Bradley Cooper's barely in the film. The whole supporting cast is just awful. Just, these characters are annoying and irritating and unlikable. I had, I did not care where the story was going. I had no interest in the plot, no interest in the characters, and it wasn't very funny. It wasn't very deep. It wasn't very dramatic. The soundtrack was also wasted. It had nothing to do with the storyline. They just had popular songs just to put popular songs in the film. And yeah, I just did not like this movie. I don't know what... Jennifer Lawrence was good, but she wasn't Oscar-worthy good. She was nominated for this movie. Very undeserved. I don't think she deserved it. This movie deserved no love, no praise, because it wasn't a good film. Coming number seven is Spanking the Monkey. Yes, that is a very odd title, especially when you know what the story of this movie is. It makes it even more odd and more uncomfortable. This is a dark, dramatic comedy about a guy who has a, who has an Oedipus complex. Yes, you know Oedipus the King, the story of Oedipus the King and his mother and stuff. Yeah, that's what this movie is sort of about. It's about a guy with mother issues. I think you all know where I'm going with this, and it's very weird and kind of messed up and a little unwatchable and just kind of unpleasant, and I don't like this movie. This movie's not very good. This is a very obscure indie film that has a lot of critical praise, which is fine. A lot of people find this movie very quirky, very funny, very dark and stuff, and I didn't find it very funny. I didn't find it very quirky. Well, it was quirky, just not my kind of quirky. My kind of quirky is like Wes Anderson. That's my kind of quirky. This is not my kind of quirky. It's not my kind of humor. It's not my kind of story. I just found this movie very off-putting, and not 
not very watchable and stuff. And some people love some of uh, these very hard-hitting emotional scenes in this film. None of them really hit me. I just wanted this movie to end as soon as it kind of began. As soon as, like, the, the plot came in, I'm just like, okay, I, I'm done with this movie. But I watched it all the way through. As painful as, painful as it was, I did. And it's not a good film. It's one of the weaker David Russell films. I get if people love it. I just don't. Coming to number six is the movie Flirting with Disaster. Flirting with Disaster is another pretty good film. It's, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm being very negative on David O. Russell, and I don't mean to be, but, yeah, his some of his movies are either amazing or really not good, and honestly, this movie's a one and done for me. Like, this movie has good moments, has funny moments. Patricia Arquette and Ben Stiller are very good in the film. Just... I don't know, just, this movie doesn't appeal to me, like, I didn't have an interest with these characters, I didn't root for any of these characters, this movie felt, it was a little too raw, and again, kind of unlikable at times and stuff, and just, it was kind of off-putting, like, sometimes when David or Russell does a comedy, it's really funny, and I get really invested in it, but some other times, just, it's just not funny to me, it's not very appealing to me, and it's not very watchable. And that's what Flirting with Disaster is. See, Spanking the Monkey, I don't think that's a good film. Flirting with Disaster, I know it's a good film with good writing and good direction, but it's not a movie I can really get into and really find very appealing and stuff. I've watched it once, and I probably would never watch it again. It's good, just not watchable. Coming number five is I Heart Hucklebees. Yes, I Heart Hucklebees is actually a pretty good movie. Like Flirting with Disaster, and like Flirting with Disaster, it has dark comedy. It even has some thrills in it. has a very good ending. All of the similar similarities like Flirting with Disaster, but Flirting with Disaster has more of a romantic. This is more comedic and dramatic. And I do find this movie better. I like the cast, and I actually enjoy some of the characters like Mark Wahlberg in the film. Again, it's sort of a one and done for me. It is. I watched it once and I have no interest to ever watch I Heart Huckabees again, but I was laughing and I did want to see where the story was going, and by the end of the film, I'm like, that was very good. Would I watch it again? No, but still a good film. Coming number four is the movie American Hustle. Yes, American Hustle, as a lot of people have been calling it, very overrated. A lot of people really hated this film when it came out. Completely get it. When I first saw it in theaters, I had like the biggest hopes for this movie. I put this movie on the hugest pedestal because the fighter and Silver Lung's playbook, and I was just loving David O. Russell. So I was expecting like a masterpiece when this movie came out, and I didn't get a masterpiece, so I found the movie disappointing. However, though, I watched it multiple times again and again stuff, and I grew to really I get I grew to really enjoy this film and actually kind of love it. Actually, I do enjoy these characters. I do like the story. I do find this movie very riveting and very funny and stuff, and I do really like it. I rate I, I I like it a lot. Actually, I think Christian Bale is solid in the film. I think he very much deserved his nomination. I really enjoyed him. I really like Jennifer Lawrence. She is very over the top sometimes, but again, she's enjoyable. I don't mind Amy Adams. I don't think she deserved a nomination, but I thought she was good. Bradley Cooper I did not like. I didn't like his character, and I don't think his performance was very good. There's moments like he's screaming for no reason. There's a scene where he's trying to ha have sex with Amy Adams, and all of a sudden he just starts yelling, and then she hits him with the phone, and that wasn't very funny to me. It was supposed to be dark comedy, but it wasn't very funny. I thought Jeremy Renner gave a better performance, and I thought Bradley Cooper should have been nominated for supporting actor for a different film that year in the 2013 for Place Beyond the Pines, a better performance and a better movie. But I still really enjoyed this film. I liked the comedy. I liked the twist ending. I liked that it was this weird, you know, period piece, sort of 70s crime film, this gangster sort of, you know, heist film. It was really well done. I liked the costumes, the makeup, and the production. And again, the lead performances other than Bradley Cooper is really good. Even Louis C.K. is good. And the cameo of Robert De Niro was really good and really clever. And I like American Hustle. Some people really don't like it, but I do enjoy it. 
Coming number three is Silver Linings Playbook. Silver Linings Playbook is actually made my top ten favorite uh, movies of 2012. I thought it was a really good, very dark and raw romantic comedy. But it was the kind of dark and raw that I loved and that I found very watchable. I've seen this movie so many times and I love it. I love this couple. I actually love Tiffany, so, uh, who's played by Jennifer Lawrence. And I love Pat, played by uh, Bradley Cooper. And Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence both deserve their nominations. Jennifer Lawrence did win the Oscar. And yeah, I, I, I'm I glad that she did win. I did think Jessica Chastain was better at Zero Dark Thirty, but I'm glad Jennifer Lawrence. She was a solid number two for that year, and she was very good in this movie. She had excellent chemistry with Bradley Cooper. I loved also uh, uh, Rob De Niro was amazing. I loved uh, Johnny Tease in this movie. Chris Tucker was really good. Good. A lot. It, all, most of the performances were. The performances in this movie were also really good. And Julia Stiles was even this in this movie. She was really really solid. And yeah, I really enjoyed this film. And I love that it's a story about mental illness, about a guy who has bipolar disorder. He gets out of an institution. And he falls in love with a girl who does have, you know, weird psychotic rage and weird sexual issues, who sleeps with a lot of people and stuff. They're both basically two people that are suffering from mental illness, and they find a silver lining, and that is each other. And I really love it. This is a very funny movie, a very deep and dramatic film, very compelling, and a really well-directed film. I thought David Russell did a solid job, and it's one of my favorites. Coming number two is the movie Three Kings. Yes, we three kings are stealing the gold. Yes, this movie has George Clooney, our Ice Cube, Mark Wahlberg, Spike, Spike Jones. This is a war comedy. That is so odd, but it works so well in so many levels in this film. I love it. It's about these soldiers, and basically they're there to steal a gold in Afghanistan. I think it's Afghanistan or, or Iraq. I forget where this. I forget what the setting for this movie is, but. I Iraq or Afghanistan, they learn about this legend of this gold that's buried in this weird town stuff, and basically they go try to steal the gold and stuff. Mark Wahlberg ends up getting trapped there, and then the soldiers have to go back and rescue him and stuff, and this is a very good war movie, and also a really solid comedy. This is a very dark, comedic, action, adventure, war film, heist film, and I love it. I love every minute of Three Kings. I thought this movie was absolutely solid. This was actually always my favorite David Russell film, but then I had to think about it for this list, and I think my other one is actually his best film and my favorite, but this one is a really close run. I, th I thought this movie was absolutely solid. I thought the action was great, the comedy was great. I, I love George Clooney, Ice Cube, Spike Jones, uh, Mark Wahlberg. All of them are fantastic in this movie. It's dark, it's weird, it's strange, it's bizarre, but it's freaking awesome, and it's my second favorite David O. Russell film. And my number one favorite David O. Russell movie is The Fighter. Yes, The Fighter, the Irish Mickey and stuff. This movie has Mark Wahlberg, Christian Bale, Amy Adams, Melissa Leo. A great cast, and this is about the Irish Mickey. Mickey Ward, the boxer, and his brother, Dick Hecklin, who was a drug addict and stuff. I love this movie. I absolutely adore it. This is a movie about a brother relationship and also about an underdog, an underdog story about a man trying to get the title shot and stuff. And also deal with his brother who has drug addiction. He's addicted to crack and he also does prostitution for women and stuff. And yeah, he wants to be there for his brother, but he knows his brother is messed up. I love this movie. I love how David Russell wrote and directed this film. The writing is amazing. Very bleak, very raw, very realistic, and also really solid from start to finish. Mark Wahlberg, Amy Adams, Melissa Leo are all fantastic. Christian Bale, of course, is the show stealer. He won the Oscar. He's amazing as Dick Hecklin. He is absolutely solid in this film. He lost so much weight. He actually looks like he's a drug addict in the film. And He's amazing. The boxing scenes are great. It's very inspirational near the ending. You'll have a lot of hope for this family because he wants the title. He gets clean off drugs. He gets married. Mark Wahlberg gets married to Amy Adams at the ending. It's a very happy, very inspirational climax and stuff. And I loved it. It's a dark story with a happy ending, and I love it. It's one of my favorite boxing movies out there, and it's hands down my favorite David O. Russell film. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of David Russell's movies, from my least favorite to my favorite. So yeah, in the comment section below, please tell me what is your ranking of all of David Russell's movies, from your least favorite to your favorite. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.